Så vi prøver lidt. Okay, jeg kan høre dig. How are things? Uh, okay. You've been up to anything interesting lately? Yeah, I mean, a lot of things, but uh, nothing gets related, unfortunately. <laughs> it's all supply chain work. It's less less interesting than net computing, I must say, but yeah. <laughs> well, I guess at some point the supply chain has to join the edge too. <laughs> Yeah, I've been thinking a little, little, little bit about it, but there's still, yeah, it's it's a general software development, basically topic. So it doesn't matter embedded or or, or cloud or or like a classic application. It, it's all the same. It's how you build it, how you figure out what's it, what's in it, and try to find out is there anything bad inside. Yeah. It looks like Joel's trying to join us, but he's been stalled. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what have you been up to lately? You know, just is, playing around more are... with home automation and things are the edge things I met in and dabbling in AI for self-education. Cool, cool, cool. There's a lot of edge AI things at the inception level. There, there's almost so many of them that it, unlike the situation with cloud where you know the, the nvidia cuda rules everything mm. kind of er, every vendor has come out with hardware software options and there's so much to evaluate and keep up with and it, it's pretty astounding yeah 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 makes sense makes sense yeah it's a, it's a new gold rush huh? <laughs> <laughs> i guess that's a good way to put it yeah <laughs> I'm looking forward to some device I ordered from Seed Studios, uh, uh, an edge device with AI capabilities that's supposed to arrive within the next few weeks. Yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Yeah, I miss hardware, yeah, for the last year or so, it's... The yeah, nice data, thing about the, data, these... Data. These edge solutions, um, even the edge AI, is they're inexpensive enough that even as a hobbyist, you you can go out and buy them to play around with. It's kind of like, um, oh, cool. I'm sure others would disagree, but I think kind of the cool toy on the block of 10 years ago might have been the Raspberry Pi. But now there's no one contender, but there's an awful lot of these really cool, yeah. inexpensive edge devices that combine AI um, either at the chip or board level. And uh, I think that in some cases, if you sit through webinars and things, you can even get vendors to provide you with free samples of these things. So they're, they're kind of inexpensive, but you might be able to, depending on your situation, even uh, get somebody to send you a, you know, a dev kit or something free or close to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So Joel, if you're if you can actually hear us on our end, it says you're still connecting. So maybe you should give give up and retry because it looks like you've been stalled for minutes. And Rob, I see you join us. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Mm. Yeah, we're we're trying to decide what will happen here. A bunch of the regulars are at KubeCon North America right now. And it, they had the Kubernetes on the edge and the WasmCon events yesterday, but the main event kicks off today. So I have a feeling that maybe uh, they won't be joining us, but perhaps they'll pop in here and give us a recap of anything interesting that they might have come across yesterday. I thought that started November 12th. No, I, if, well, let me look. I thought it was today. Yeah, my mouth of. Oh, you're right. Oh, I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, never mind. We were talking about it at the last meeting, and I think that's why it was sitting in my mind. No problem. 
But anyway, there's nothing on the agenda. So this is just birds of a feather. Anything you've come across interesting lately or uh, want to announce or bring up? Um, I was presenting at Roscon last week and I got to meet uh, Tamoya face to face, which was kind of oh. cool. Yeah, um, that's interesting. I saw the, the Cubage project that he has been involved with just recently graduated. Um, I was wondering, have, have we had any, I've been missing a few of the meetings. Have we had any updates on where things are at with Cubage? Well, you know, they have their own meeting. So they, since that started, uh, they have not been a regular attendee of these meetings. So uh, I don't, I don't know when it is exactly, but that that's one of the aspects of, I think you're entitled to that if you want it, even before graduation, but I believe they have their own cube edge recurring meeting that would be the place where they would, you know, announce their releases and major improvements, things like that. Uh, I would think that you could go to their GitHub and they should have a link to that meeting. Because mm -hmm. I think um, the CNCF for their sponsored projects actually has kind of a health grade thing. And one of the criteria is that you do have regular meetings. So bottom line is uh, in this group, no, I haven't kept track. And, you know, at one time I was following it more than I am lately. So I have to say, I'm, you know, I haven't actually even deployed CubeEdge in well over a year. Um, it's just not something I found a personal use for. Yeah, I think that's part of the tricky thing with a lot of these edge things. It's a time investment to really explore and test it out. Yeah, and, and it's recurring too. It's not just one time. I, I say that, yeah, in the beginning of the project, I was quite familiar with its architecture. I Probably it hasn't changed that much, so I could still claim that's likely true, but I haven't kept up. And there were so many of them, too. I mean, that might arguably, I, I believe that might be the first uh, Kubernetes on the edge project. Um, it was the first that I became aware of, but there were a number of them that followed it. And really, it. It isn't just keeping up with one if you find yourself in the position where, you know, you you want to use Kubernetes at edge. Um, certainly K3S falls in that and MicroKates and a number of others. Um, I think that if you're not a committed user, it's really tough to claim that you're fully up on the entire field. Maybe yeah. we can ask ask Tomoya to maybe give us an update of how they graduated. So what happened in the last year or so, if he would have time to do it. That sounds good to me. Or maybe you can if you went there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm hoping I get a chance to go to KubeCon, but um, uh, we haven't we haven't made a commitment from the company side to go yet. So, how big was the attendance at the, the robotics conference? There were a thousand people. Oh, that that's really good size. More tried to get in, but unfortunately, we we hit the maximum capacity for the theater that uh, the venue. Uh -huh. Would you say that that's, uh, you know, a, in, in terms of um, users uh, increasing utilization of that? Do you think that's uh, on a growth tra trajectory with uh, a healthy user base? Oh, for sure. Because I, I'm seeing 
it's gone from just being academia to being a lot of startups with uh -huh. the semiconductor vendors also being involved. And it seems as if large companies like Sony, for example, are exploring with Ross more and more. Um, Ross comes up quite a lot in the automotive space now as, as automotive companies are trying to look for an alternative to the solutions they have today. Now, the semiconductor companies, are they making products to be used for Ross or are, are they using it themselves in their own manufacturing process or both? They're, they're making products, they're making robotics kits uh -huh. that have support for adding sensors and actuators. And then they're coming out with um, sample Linux distributions that um, support ROS. Now, the cool thing about ROS is it's all microservice based, so it might lend itself well for containerization. Um, the tricky part till now, you might have remembered from Tomoya's talk, is it used um, DDS multicast to communicate, which mm -hmm. didn't play nicely with Kubernetes. But they're switching to this new protocol, Xeno, which is meant to alleviate some of the headaches with DDS. And that might also help solve the Kubernetes problem. Well, I think the other thing that has traditionally uh, been raised as a concern by people with kind of all of these stacks, it doesn't matter what the abstraction layer is really. When it came to manufacturing automation, there are often uh, upper latency limits that are uh, either critical to you know, reliable operation or even safety. And adding the abstraction layers, it you know, you could go back decades and people were concerned with even adding virtualization than containers and kind of even an OS could be viewed as an abstraction layer over writing directly in code to uh, you know interrupt controllers for ultra low latency. I'm wondering if stacking containerization along with Kubernetes, um, isn't going to be a concern for that. It, it, I'm, I'm sure it would be a concern to me. It just might be that people have uh, reached the point where it's a solved problem. Um, I think it's a really good point to raise. There's there's work in the ROS community about measuring real time response of the applications, mm -hmm. and so with that they focus on making sure that when you are communicating on the network, you're, you're not being slowed down by double copies and you're able to communicate directly to the device to get the message on the wire as, as efficiently as possible. There's also work within the Docker slash container community to try to support real-time workloads in the container. Um, and then that comes with caveats like, you're not allowed to write to files because that's slow to begin with, but the overlay FS inside of the container um, doesn't help. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so I think it's a uh, there's a, a way to achieve it, but you just have to make sure to walk that fine line so that you don't fall into any of the pitfalls. Yeah, I think at, at the upper level too of Kubernetes, monitoring application health, rescheduling and things like that, kind of the latency guarantees are potentially up in the, in the level of seconds. Now, you know, that, that really might only come into play when there's some anomaly, like recovery from a failed piece of hardware or doing an update that you might have some control over, but the cycle times on some of the things going on in Kubernetes are potentially pretty long. Yeah, and I think in those cases, people would expect that you'd have a policy that prevented orchestration during certain periods. Mm -hmm. So everything would be pretty static during the operation of the device. Hi, Kate. I see you joined us. You stepped into the middle of a conversation where Rob uh, went to the Ross conference last week, and he's giving us uh, a recap. He was asking some questions about whether anybody knew of recent activity in the CubeEdge project. 
and he was telling us that uh, this Ross conference, it seems like there's uh, growing usage and interest in it, that the conference got uh, reached capacity where they couldn't let any more people in at a thousand people. So it sounds like there's a lot going on there. And, and the connection to this group was I got to meet Tamoya face to face. Where was that conference held? Was that in the Bay Area or somewhere else? It was in Odense, Denmark. Oh, okay. Was the um, large demand for the conference related to CubeEdge or just related to Ross in general? Uh, was that the connection you're making? It, it was related to Ross in general, but there was uh, there were a number of um, spontaneous meetups that were scheduled by the attendees through the app, and Tamoya had arranged a Kubernetes meetup. And I think that's how we started down this thread. <laughs> But um, but it was just interesting to see um, Kubernetes showing up in different places. Are there any, so I've been out of the loop for a while. Um, have you folks had any thoughts as to what sort of things you'd want to plan for this group between now and the end of the year? Well, I know I, I blew it on guessing the schedule for KubeCon, but it might actually be interesting to have some people join during or slightly after KubeCon to give a recap of anything interesting that they come across or that gets announced there. I'm but kind of volunteering think... others, though, since I wasn't going to be there. I'm happy to give a recap of um, some of the uh, of WasmCon and Edge Day, I'll be participating in both. Sorry, my cat. Um, participating in both, but um, I probably won't be attending all of both. But I can give kind of some of the highlights of both of those. And Rob, if you've got any suggestions on what what you'd like to see, we could we probably have some runway to try to recruit speakers or something on whatever topics might be of interest to you. Well, I, I'm still interested in that spreadsheet that um, we were talking about about a year ago with the list of all the different projects and finding some way of doing a bake-off or providing updates on where those are at. I find the challenge is that there's so many projects now and the discussions are happening everywhere. I think it would be useful just to summarize all the good things that are going on somehow. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I haven't had time to keep up. I was the one who started that, I think, and I haven't touched it in three to six months. But um, I I think it potentially is a great resource. Um, I didn't get a whole lot of traction on other people joining in. The kind of the list hit, I believe there's around 110 things on there. Undoubtedly, the way open source is, um some of them some of those projects have probably gone into stasis or retirement mode at this point but i haven't gone back to check but to whatever extent some of those might have uh gone by the wayside i'm sure there's new ones yeah i think that's exactly the interesting part of it to me is like what projects have stopped being maintained and what new projects have been created because to me that speaks to um, where the gaps weren't actually and where the gaps now are. And that could be really interesting to see trends. What, yeah, what one I, of the things okay. that I aspired to do was that, um, I think it's the Linux Foundation, but one of these open source foundations actually came up with a project to define health mate metrics for projects. And they measure things like anything from the number of contributors, whether they're from multiple organizations or just one company, uh, what the response time is to a PR being submitted, whether it's you know accepted or denied. Uh, and it gives just an overall health metric score. I forget whether it was scale of one to five or one to 10. But 
uh, this project for it attempted to automate it by going at the GitHub repository and just collecting these things. And I did that on a few of those just out of interest, but potentially with some investment, you could come up with something that would crawl every one of those that has an open source repository and come up with a metric, this health score. And it should give you a, it, it should call out these things that have essentially been abandoned. Now, maybe you don't need the tool to do that because I found that if you just go to the GitHub and there hasn't been a commit in a year, it kind of is telling me that the project's dead. And, you know, I've, I personally would be skeptical of using something like that, figuring there's no security patching or anything going on about the only thing it would be useful for is maybe forking it if you couldn't find anything similar and wanted really wanted it badly enough to pick it back up and carry on. But of that list of 100, at least 50 were quite active by my recollection, meaning that you'd find uh, commits within the last week to couple of months, uh, meaning it's they're still being maintained. Yeah, I think that sounds really worthwhile. And it's it's one of those things I'd like to try to contribute to, but I'm not prepared to do the whole list. So if other people are interested in splitting the work, I would certainly raise my hand and help out. Mm -hmm. And kind of, you know, just a summary of, um, I never did commit this to a report, but there are some broad categories, like the one you mentioned of an edge-centric Kubernetes. Those are very popular uh, categories, meaning there's more than even one or two people in that category, yet they are being actively maintained. And that list is perhaps useful for somebody who's starting a project and wants this particular category of solution. So the one where... It was interesting that it would almost give you too much to look at. If you were out there searching for an edge-centric Kubernetes, that list would give you a whole lot of them. And it wouldn't give you the answer that this is the one that I should use. It would instead give you a list that you'd have to do more homework. Kind of the other one in that category of kind of too many to give you the answer would be MQTT brokers, of which... I, my recollection is I was kind of shocked that there were like almost 10 of them. And, uh, you know, that it, it is something clearly people find useful. There wouldn't be that many if that wasn't the case. But the list wouldn't give you the answer of this is the one I should use. Well, it might ultimately at least give you the list to sort through. And then there were others where there is a category killer where, you know, it, it's pretty clear that there's a list of two or three, yet this one has a lot more traction in terms of, you know, activity, users, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I think to that point, um, tags would be really helpful if like for each item we could add tags, but with Excel, I mean, I'm not an Excel master, maybe there is a way to do this, but easily adding tags to things seems a little hard. I wonder if we should use something like Notion where you can drop all these in and then people can add tags to things and then the categories are formed naturally. Like someone starts tagging everything and then you can filter by tags. And I just find Excel kind of limiting for that because we had to define all the categories. And I think that was a bit of a roadblock, but if we can just have like unlimited tags available, people can continually add tags to all the different things. And then you can constantly filter by those tags. Yeah, I think you're right there. Data. One thing I contemplated doing when I did that spreadsheet was putting a column saying this is the category it's in. But the trouble is that some of those projects are system level. So, I mean, well, take Kubernetes. It covers networking, storage, whatever. And there are some of those uh, edge open source projects that target one very specific thing. And it's very clear, you know, how you would describe them, something like, I don't know, MQTT broker. But then there are others that combine multiple functions into one project. So that if you had just a column saying it's one of these, 
uh, there's three different answers for this project in terms of what it is. You know, it bites off networking, storage, uh, logging, whatever, uh, or things that combine logging with a UI. Um, and the tags might be a nice solution to being able to address that where you wouldn't be limited to one tag per project. Maybe we can also sort them by like, you know, some, some of these big things are basically platforms, right? So they try to like, mm -hmm. uh, some of them are, are, are just libraries and there are things in between, right? I had a term when I started this sentence and I forgot it again. But yeah, pl platforms or components and, and libraries, three, three different. Yeah, if, especially if by platforms, one of the things that made it really hard to categorize some of them is they are like a platform that supports plugins, you know, and I guess Kubernetes is like this too, you know, you can plug in your network interface, you can plug in your favorite form of storage in the CSI plugins. And then if you're trying to summarize what its capabilities are, what or even its health, given that it really is a framework to compose a bunch of things you handpick as plugins, it it it's really hard to come up with that summary answer of uh, what it is, what its capabilities are, even what its health is, because it might depend on how you chose to configure it. That might mean that one of the categories is that it is just a framework as opposed to, you know, a specific thing. But the other things are that some of those things on that list are really just plugins that, you know, they're made to work in conjunction with other things and they aren't really all that functional on a standalone basis. Yeah, I think that's some, something important to highlight. And then like the flip side of that is say which projects have been integrated with other projects. Like even if people just use them together, that's a that's a sign that they're not just off on an island by themselves. Uh -huh. Another thing that hadn't thought of me at the time I was doing it, but it strikes me that recently there's, you know, if you went back five years kind of um, at the higher level, when you get to clouds, the x86 processor family ruled the roost, but now it's much more competitive than it used to be. Yet some of these projects only support one architecture, you know, one OS or one CPU family in terms of, what they're uh, doing builds against and doing testing against, that might well be a useful criteria for somebody. Yeah, agreed. So what's the best way forward on this? Is this something we wanna investigate and report back on at the next meeting or? I guess yeah. my preliminary question would be do people agree that excel is a limiting format do we need to move to a different format like notion i definitely agree that excel is a limiting format i don't i've never used notion myself yeah i don't know what notion even is and technically that isn't excel it it it's a google google sheets <clears throat> uh spreadsheet i think I mean, um, yeah. But, yeah, same thing. Um, I'm happy to take an action item of our next meeting showing, like, an example of what this would look like in Notion, if that's helpful. So, sure. like, I'll move over some. And um, you can have, like, public Notion URLs. Um, but it's just really great for being able to be very dynamic and filterable and tags and such, but stuff like that. Let me ask you this. I mean, I guess I've I've been living under a rock because I never even heard of it. So tell me what tell me what notion is and where I'd go find it. It's basically a tool that's trying to replace uh the whole Microsoft suite, essentially. So it's okay. like Microsoft Word, Excel, um, 
uh, OneNote, et cetera, all into like one um, application. And it's online and uh, you can have your app version. It's what my company uses. Like we use it instead of Word. Um, and it's just a really great one shop, a uh, one stop shop. Is it only online or can you use it when you're detached from the internet? Oh, that's a really good question. I think it it used to be only online, but I know that was a really high priority issue. So we actually haven't checked in a few months. Um, they might have made it offline available at this point. Is there a way to export the data? I'm not sure. Um, that's a good requirement for sure. I'll, I'll look into that. I know you okay, can... well, if you want to volunteer to do it, I'm I'm all for that. I, I I'd be interested in hearing what what you demonstrated too. Yeah, and depending on how this conversation goes, I can probably just pull up a demo of that, like a showing what it looks like in a couple minutes. So I'll go camera off and do that real. Quick. Yeah, there might well be other tools or. I think there's it it might be sort of a hack, but there is a way to just put tags and Excel columns and things too, I suspect. And it is quite impressive what people have used Excel for. I uh I know that some people have used Excel for planning out factory floor layouts. <laughs> yeah, there, there are a lot of uses for, let's just say, especially when you get into the formats. Technically, I think some of those formats, like the .csv, maybe predated Excel, you know, back when spreadsheets were more competitive and you had, what was the original one? The Lotus 123, I think it was, or something, and... There were a few other contenders before Microsoft kind of took over with that suite concept. But certainly if you're going to take it down to the level of using CSV files to drive things, that really is could be viewed as just a data storage format, if you will. And I've seen that used kind of as a database with a very accessible UI where people can um, go and look at and reconfigure in a table-driven format uh, configurations for a lot of things in, in manufacturing and even uh, utilize it for, that would be kind of using it as input, but using it as output is really useful too, as kind of something that's universally accessible. You know, if you've got a software project that is going to produce a report, there are far worse things. You know, there's an argument that dumping out that report in CSV lets anybody do anything they want with it as compared to putting it into some database where you first have to decree what the database is and then publish the schema and take it from there. It's kind of like for some of the things like converting that report to just a chart very simply, the spreadsheet formula is arguably easier to deal with. Mm -hmm. Can y'all see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Um, okay, so this is an example of Notion. Um, I just added Aukri as a project, but um, I just created a board here and you can add new entries and just say we wanted to dynamically add a new tag. So someone wanted to come in and add a tag, they could just create this. And then you could do like create add a new project. I don't know EMQX of GitHub, we'll just say github.com. EMQX. EMQX, I don't know. Um, and then you could add the same tag and then say someone was coming in and wanted to uh, filter. Uh, they could filter by a tag, for example. So I only want the MQTT projects and all of a sudden only MQTT ones are showing. That's a bad example because they're all MQTT. Um, but, and then you can remove tags, uh, but then say we added a project that's not MQTT, it's only Kubernetes. So cube edge. 
actually a cube edge might have an MQGT like um, discover or something, but yeah, you can filter for the projects you're looking for with your tags and easily add tags, et cetera. So yeah, that's just a quick example. It looks nice. Is is uh, this thing hosted and is there a version available for free or is this something you have to pay for? It is hosted um, and you can get a free account. Um, I And I think you can even view pages without any account. Like you can have just a public URL. I did um, put this in my company's Notion real quick. So I would probably choose to move it over to my personal one. Um, and then I could share the, you know, the link for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. let me just do that real quick. What about um, export? Like it looks nice, but suppose that I, I really wanted to do something with it. Uh, can I export what I saw there on that screen into a spreadsheet format? Yeah, that's the question Rob asked. Um, and I do think that is a requirement. So let me see if I can do that. One thing that occurred to me just seeing that MQTT tag is uh, the moment I saw it, I'm going, you know, that's a little too simplistic because some of these projects actually implement MQTT in the sense that they are a broker and others utilize it. And how we would convey that, like, it, it seems like we should if we're going to tag it because just that tag MQTT that means it touches it in some way, it doesn't tell you enough to be useful potentially. Yeah, and that's where compounding tags can be helpful. So you could add like MQTT and then you could add, add like MQTT consumer or MQTT mm. producer um, and just add like tags like that. So I posted the documentation in the chat. It looks like there's a export for HTML, PDF, and um, CSV. So okay. I'm sure that would be fine. It might it might look slightly different, but the important thing for me is just being able to get the data without having to transcribe it again. Yeah, but then you can import CV into whatever spreadsheet you want, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm exporting it now, and now I'm interested in seeing how it's going to make the the tags look. Like, maybe this will teach us how we could do this all in Excel. <laughs> Another thing that just occurred to me, Kate, is what kind of gatekeeping there is. Because if you look at um, something, uh, I don't know, like a Google Docs document, you can impose some kind of governance on it so that somebody can't just go hack it, destroy things, or, you know, silently edit comments. Uh, some of these, some of the things in the Google suite support forms of moderation or a history where if somebody did deface a document that you could at least roll it back. Does it have those things built in? It does have version control and we could make it read only, except for like I could give right access to just a few people. Yeah, because I think with in terms of that spreadsheet, because there's a history, uh, I was publishing that completely open edit access for anybody in the group. And I think that's probably the right way to do it to, uh, you know, to get people to contribute people from any random open source project are free to add their own entry. We kind of like to add it that way, just because there's a lot of work in even being a moderator. And I'd rather have it be open loop and then should something bad happen, you can clean up the mess later rather than have it be really structured, which would tend to, you know, with um, formal governance tends to slow things down, I think, and make it harder for people to contribute. Yeah. Um, here's the exported table. And tags are just a comma separated list. So I bet Excel has some formula for being able to filter by a comma separated item. Um, yeah, they do. In fact, I think in a column, there's kind of in the advanced thing that I'd have to look up every time I'd use it. Um, 
on that tags column, you can put together a list that says only these things are allowed. So that it's not necessarily just total free form text, but you have to uh, pick a thing out of a structured list. Yeah, I mean, I think Notion's just a different UX, but I think we probably mm -hmm. could just do this in Excel. I don't know if we can do it in Sheets, but, you know, I think that's another option is just getting someone who's really good at Excel or Sheets to, and maybe the, the spreadsheet's almost there. Maybe we just need to do the tags a little bit differently. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, thanks for this demo. That, uh, that was useful. Well, thanks, Rob, for, I, I, sounds like we are going to take that up as something before the end of the year. Um, and we'll go forward with that. Yeah, looking forward to it. Because to tie it back to the thing we started with, um, it's so hard to find time to try these out. And if, um, if you can, if one can do a few and then benefit from the work other people have put into it, then it makes it worthwhile. Yeah. Now I contend you maybe still have to try them out, but there's a lot of time involved in just finding them within a category. And, you know, I, I found a lot of use just to getting a convenient li link to where the projects live. <laughs> oh, for sure. And, and like, if you have a bunch of Raspberry Pis, knowing that if you go to this particular wiki page for the project, they'll have an example of how to deploy to a Raspberry Pi, because otherwise the opening page might be too general and abstract and you you have to figure out, okay, practically, how am I gonna deploy this thing? Yeah. Okay, well, we still have 15 minutes left. Anybody else got anything they want to bring up? Joel, I see you're back. You want to say hello if you've got working audio. Hello. Hi. Hey. I was um, trying to avoid getting pulled into something in the day job. So successful so far. <laughs> um I uh, I guess the only question out of the group here, if anybody's going to be in Salt Lake City at KubeCon in a couple weeks, uh, I will be out there. Oh, I'll be there. I don't um, know if you talked about that at all. Sorry, go ahead, Kate. Uh, I'll be there at Edge Day, WasmCon, and the main event. So, um, And we'll have a Fermion booth that I'll be at a lot of the time. So you'll be able to find me there at least. Cool. Are you going to any of the pre days or pre events? That I haven't figured out the week yet, but I'm registered where I can, um, where I'd be able to go. That's the Tuesday, right? Uh, edge day is Tuesday, yeah. Okay. Cool. I should be going to some of those. I just haven't figured out uh, the complete schedule yet.
Well, if nobody's got anything else, maybe we'll just end this a little bit early today. Sounds good. Okay, well, thanks everybody for Hello. coming and we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Sounds good. It was a good conversation. Take yeah. care. Everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone.